welcome to New Hope. Let's stand together. Turn to hymn number 264. Worthy is the Lamb. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you pay. Bearing all my sin and shame, in love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for this love, Lord. Thank you for the me in your cleansing flow, now all I know, your forgiveness and embrace, worthy is the Lamb, seated on the throne, crown you now with many crowns, you reign victorious. Take a minute and greet each other as the choir sings. Let's sing together this morning. It soothes my doubt. It soothes my doubt and calms my fears. And it dries all my tears. The blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will to our special service today. It's our Lottie Moon kickoff Sunday, and we are so excited to uh, have special guests. We'll introduce those in just a few moments. But we'd ask, if you would, to give special attention this week. Uh, we have some special needs in prayer this week. We uh, ask, if you would, uh, if Bruce is with us. Continue to remember Bruce, if you will, as um, also McGee and also Paul Stringer. Uh, we also have um, Crystal Pittman. As you know, she has twins, and they uh, she had a heart attack, and they're going, she's in Oshners in New Orleans, and uh, they will, my understanding that the twins will be 30 weeks and old, and so they're going to be able to take those this week. Please be in prayer for that family. Also, be in prayer, if you would, for Danny. Uh, 
Thomas. He's, he's here with us. He's going to be having surgery tomorrow. And I uh, also ask if you would uh, to please remember Miss Sharon Porter. She'll have surgery on Tuesday. And so we so good to see you here today. We appreciate you coming, especially if you're a guest. You're always welcome, and we thank you for coming. Uh, we ask if you would about as we have a word of prayer of this service and these individuals. Father, we, Lord, we just pause, Lord, to pray for our friends, our neighbors. Uh, Lord, we, we lift up in prayer every one of these we've mentioned, and we know there's so many others that we have uh, that have requested prayer. God, there's so many people that need a fresh touch from you, Lord. Some of them are, are fighting for their lives. Some of them are, are just struggling through health issues, uh, and it may be issues that none of us have actually voiced today. We know, Lord, that you know every concern, every situation, every need. And, Lord, we just come to you, Lord. We know every time that we pray, we, you hear our prayer. But, God, we know that it may be a time in our life where we feel like we're so alone. And our prayer does not pass the, the ceiling. And, Lord, I just pray for strength, Lord, that you would just encourage those that need encouragement today. Uh, Lord, for those un, uh, mentioned unspoken requests that we have in our church family and this community. Uh, God, we just pray, Lord, for the situation, the unrest around the world. And that we just pray for world peace. Father, we just pray that you would, Lord, to protect uh, those that are sent out from uh, us to be able to share the gospel. Lord, we know that we all have that responsibility to, to go tell. And Lord, I just pray that we would uh, receive our courage from the, through the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, that we would be empowered to go out uh, to show and exhibit the love of Jesus Christ. Lord, help us to be able to do that, but not because you just commanded us, but because we have a love in our heart for you and for word of God and also the Great Commission. Just pray for today, Lord, as we go into our time of continuing with our time of music and also through our time of, of spoken word, Lord, and report from the mission field. We just thank you for David and Claudia as they have come. Lord, you have blessed their lives and that ministry for so many years, and we pray, God, your continued blessings upon them. Uh, God, I pray you would help us to have an open mind, that we'd have an open heart, and that we would be able to uh, just to receive the word that you have for us today. Lord, that we would, uh, Lord, be able to not just be hearers, but we'd be able to go out and be doers uh, as well and be able to put feet to it. Thank you again for these that have come today. And God, that we would be re-energized and recharged to be able to go out and to be able to let our light shine and make a difference here in this community and throughout the world. Father, protect us, watch over us. And God, we ask you to come and meet with us in a special way today. We desire, uh, Lord, your very sincere presence to be made known here in Jesus name. Amen. You may be seated. It's so good to see you. I just have one or two things that I wanted to make mention. We will have after announcements the Sunday School Recognition. Uh, we have some, a very special uh, recognition today and so it's awesome to see B with us today and we're glad that he and his friends are with us. Thank you so much for coming today as well. Um, also, at the end of our service, you know, we always take a love, our, love offering up uh, for our missionaries today. We will do that after we have our invitation. We will take that offering up at the ending of our service before we go out into the Family Life Center for a meal together at Churchwide this morning. So we encourage you to stay for that, if you will. But uh, give as the Lord leads you. And so today we have uh, David and Claudia Johnson. They are from Bangkok, Thailand. And uh, they have served the Lord faithfully for 25 years in uh, missions on, with the IMB and uh, International Mission Board. It's going through a lot of transitions right now. And uh, so we encourage you to pray for them. We are excited to have you all with us. And uh, we know that it's been a while since we, as we say, booked you all uh, to come. But we are so excited that you all come from Birmingham. Uh, they are from Birmingham. They have three kids. Uh, there's a son and then there's two daughters and the two daughters will be graduating from UAB and coming up and so we're I know their uh, life is also in transition as well so uh, but anyway uh, we uh, want to uh, just to let you know that and uh, tonight also is Deacon me Brock I think has a few things that he's going to come and share with us at this time and if I forget I'll let you know later good morning we welcome you here this morning. This is, of course, we are nearing the Christmas season. We have a lot of activities and things going on in the life of our church. I trust you will take time to read the bulletin and go through it thoroughly to make sure you don't miss anything, as I'll only have time to highlight a few items this morning. But I do want to make you aware that we will have a covered dish lunch after the morning service this morning in the Family Life Center, so please hang around with us and, and take 
part in breaking bread there. Uh, Monday, uh, tomorrow is the deadline to get on the uh, list for the meal. And I've been told there's two ways to do that. There will be a list put out after the service this morning. You can sign it tonight or you can call or email Miss Beth uh, and let her know that you want to be on that list. We will have Wednesday night meal this Wednesday. Uh, senior adults, 5.30 Thursday, no, excuse me, 5 o'clock Thursday, you'll be going to Stogner's, uh, one of my favorite places to dine for Christmas Fellowship at 5.30. Uh, if you go on your own, please do not arrive before 5.30. And then a couple uh, notes about our children's events next Sunday. There will be a children's Christmas party after the morning worship service uh, next Sunday, and the children will practice their Christmas music uh, after the Christmas party. And then in kind of similar conjunction with that, all parents with children interested in attending the children's camp next summer at Lake Forest Ranch need to meet down front after the morning worship service next Sunday, and a $50 deposit will be needed as well. As I said, there's many other announcements. I hope you'll take your time to read those. Uh, this time I'll ask for the Sunday school. Seventy present today, and that included seven visitors and nine on our phone ministry class with an offer of eight thousand eight hundred fourteen dollars. Um, we do want to recognize perfect attendance now. And before we start, we don't we didn't have anybody with one year perfect attendance uh, this year. And I tried to make sure we didn't overlook somebody. If we did, I'm sorry, but uh, being recognized, I guess it's nice. But I guess the most important thing is to make a commitment, make a commitment to study God's word. Word and, and week in and week out, week out, day after day. And we know here today we're going to recognize some of those people, but again, uh, I, I myself missed a Sunday. I forgot where I was, but I didn't go to church. I wasn't here, and I didn't attend a Sunday school studying. So, uh, but I think each of us can take these people and use them as an example and challenge ourselves. Uh, you don't get to these big, long years until you get the first year. So let's, uh, let's individually make a commitment to, uh, to study God's Word. And today, as we start off, the very smallest, uh, the very least amount is 10 years. For 10 years, Dylan Smith has been attending Sunday school and studying his Sunday school lesson. Dylan? for 17 years, Christy Smith has been attending Sunday school. So Christy. Oh, and we got a pattern going, I guess. For 34 years, Cheryl McGee has been attending Sunday school. Jimmy Thomas, for 46 years, Mr. Jimmy has been studying Sunday school. <laughs> Mr. Jimmy whispered blessings to me, and what he means by that is it's quite a blessing to have the opportunity and the ability to study God's Word for so long. Oh, um, In 1955, Dwight Eisenhower was president. Bread was 18 cents a loaf. The postage stamp was three cents. Minimum wage was 75 cents. And B.B. Stringer completed his first year of studying Sunday school. We want to recognize B.B. today for 60 years of studying God's Word and for, for being an example to so many people I'm certainly pleased to have our missionaries here today who devoted their life to traveling around the world and sharing God's word. But B.B. is a 
perfect example of staying at home, uh, using what God gives you, and blessing those around you. VV, we want to recognize him today for 60 years of service, and we want to give him a pen, which he's got 60 of, and we want to present him a plaque, and it says, uh, presented to, to B.B. Stringer in observance of 60 years of faithful study of God's Word through Sunday school from 1955 to 2015, New York Baptist Church. Thank you, B.B. Amen. That's having church right there. Isn't it? Um, do want to invite all the choir members to choir practice today at 430. We will be singing at Calvary next Sunday night. You don't want to miss it. We will have a live orchestra there. We'll be doing it with a live orchestra and eight other church churches. So be there. We're also going to practice Wednesday night at Calvary at 730, and I need all the choir members there. Okay. Uh, special time today. Happy birthdays. Who's got a birthday? Madeline. Mark Croner. Come here, Mr. Mark. Come here, Mr. Mark. Come here. <laughs> I think he'd, he'd like doing this to somebody else, wouldn't he? Brother, we love you. Love Madeline, you. come here. I ain't going to leave you out. Who else? No, I'm not going to start making y'all come up here. I just figured Mr. Mark would love to come up here. Okay? Who else? Ain't nobody going to say nothing now. Are they? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's sing happy birthday to these this morning. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Amen. It's always a special time to say you've lived another year, isn't it? Amen. As we continue in worship today, we're going to sing hymn number 212, straight into 214, then straight into 215. You can remain seated. Gentle Mary laid her child lowly in a manger. There he laid the undefiled to the world a stranger. Such a babe in such a place, can he be the Savior as the Savior? Oh my. 
mighty God, isn't he, isn't he, isn't he? Field and fountain, moor and mountain, following yonder star. Oh, oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light frankincense to offer of high incense owns a deity night prayer and praising all men raising worship him God on high oh star of wonder star of night Star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Glorious now, behold him arise, King and God and sacrifice. Alleluia, alleluia. Let's stand together for offertory hymn, hymn number 209. We'll sing all three of Mary Did You Know. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new this child that you've delivered will soon Give sight to the blind man. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm the storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod when you kiss your lips? Kiss the face of God. The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the dead will live again. The lame will leave, the dumb will speak, the praises of the Lamb. Mary, did you? baby boy will one day rule the nations. Did you know that your baby boy 
is heaven's perfect lamb, and the sleeping child you're holding is a great
You know, this is our Lottie Moon kickoff Sunday. We've done this for a long, long time, and it is always awesome to have one of our IMB missionaries' families with us today and on those Sundays. And so we, uh, it's been quite some time ago, we tried to, uh, we put our name in, I guess you'd say, to try to get you here. We're very, we are very blessed to have you all with us today. And uh, David and Claudia Johnson, and originally, I believe, from Birmingham, Alabama, we are excited about having them with us and looking forward to be able to, to talk to them afterwards. Over it, everybody get a chance to talk to them over at the meal. And uh, before they come, I'll just say that today we have, toward our goal of four thousand dollars, we have one thousand six hundred and twenty dollars as of this minute toward our four thousand dollar goal. So uh, we, uh, a light, of course, represents so many dollars, and hopefully we can light up this frame over here uh, and be able to do that through the month of December. So we encourage you to give as the Lord lead you. We're going to turn the service over to you all, and we're really excited to have you here. Thank you for coming. We'll see how awesome it is when we get finished, okay? Oh, weird. I am so impressed. You know, Cheryl and Jimmy met us. They were the first people that met us when we came in, and I had no idea they even went to Sunday school the way they were talking. And uh, Bibi... I'm impressed too, but I'd really like to meet your Sunday school teacher. That's pretty amazing. We are really glad to be here. We're so grateful that y'all would invite us. We love Mississippi. Uh, we work in Southeast Asia in Thailand, and Mississippi Convention has sent volunteers to help our region for all the homeschool conferences, all the AGMs, all the annual meetings, every kind of meeting that requires child care or help Mississippi has been the state to send the volunteers for the past 10 years, every meeting. And so we love you guys, even if we're from Alabama. Claudia and I have been in Bangkok for 25 years, but just the past couple of turns, we started working with refugees. We work with mainly people that come out of Pakistan or Iran or Sri Lanka. They are escaping problems, political, religious problems. They come to Thailand where they think they're safe and they're not. Because they don't have a visa, they have to stay in hiding. And their lives are terrible. But God does amazing things in terrible things, in terrible situations, doesn't he? And we wanted to introduce you to a special couple that we've come to know, and they're much better speakers than we are. And we actually shared this story last week, and there was one lady in the crowd who was a nurse, and she sat like this the whole time. She told us at the end she thought we were lying, that we were preachers. I'm not. I'm an accountant. This, this family, this couple is real, and we're not exaggerating anything. Before we start, could we uh, pray? Oh, Lord, let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our heart be acceptable to you. In Jesus' name. We left Pakistan because of persecution. We've been in Bangkok for about a year now. So far we had been pretty safe. And I loved every day to get out of the room and take my children to school. But on this day, when I got there, the immigration police were waiting for us. They rounded us, my friends, me, our children. They put us into a caged vehicle and took us off to the detention center. There they locked us up into different cages. It was terrible for some of the women who had older boys because they got separated into, into another room. But thankfully, my children were just five and seven. It was terrifying. Crowded. We looked for a place to sleep. All we had were the clothes that we were wearing. I don't even know if I should have come here or not. I didn't know what else to do. When I was just a little boy, my dad was killed, and we grew up in my mom's house in Pakistan. Uh, when I was six and my brother Sam was four, my mother told her parents, I want to send Safar and Sam to school. They said, no, they're old enough to start working and earning a living for the family. And when mom complained, we saw her own parents took her out in the front yard right in front of us, and they strangled and killed her. 
I didn't know what to do. I, I, I grabbed Sam and we just ran. We ran. We ran to the next village and knocked on doors and we finally met a man that was a plumber and he says, you boys can live with me, but you have to work. So we learned plumbing and contracting and building. And we didn't ever go to school. We don't know how to read and write, but I'm not stupid. We had a business. We were really honest and we did a good job. But the Muslims in the town were really mean to us. We're actually Muslim too. We're a sect of Muslim called the Ahmadi. We believe there was a, a prophet that came after Muhammad and so all the rest of the Muslims just treat us like they treat the Christians terribly. We'd be in, we'd be in the shop and they'd come in and they would cheat us and we knew they were cheating but because we, we can't read and do math, we didn't know how to prove it. And then sometimes they'd have us in the corner talking or showing something and they'd be putting a bottle of alcohol in the corner and calling the police to arrest us where we'd have to give all our money to the police. Finally, I said, we can't take this anymore, but we'd heard that if you go to Bangkok, you could just stay for just a couple of months and then the UN will let you go to another country like America and you can start again. So we used all our money to come to Bangkok. Unfortunately, the story wasn't true. When you come here, you wait. You can't work and you can't leave the room. If you leave the room, they'll arrest you and that's what happened that day. They took my wife and my children. My friends and I were, were just walking around the streets. We didn't know what to do. We didn't know what, where to go. Who, who do we talk to? And we come back to the room and in the parking lot were two Americans. We thought they were with the UN, and so we just went to them. And we, we told them, you've got to help us. My wife's gone. We, told, we talked and talked, and finally they said, wait, we're, we're not who you think we are, but we are Christians, and we will pray for you. Right there in the middle of the parking lot, they raised their hands, and they started praying for our wives and our children, and that God would bring them back. As I told you, it was very crowded in here, but my children and I found a mat to sleep on. One of the worst things about this place is that they never turn the lights off. They're afraid if they do, we'll all start fighting. Well, it makes me want to fight for sure. Thankfully, the children get to leave once a day and go over to a daycare, which is right on this property. The teachers there are so sweet. They wash their clothes for them. They give them some nutritious food. For us, we're stuck here. The only time we can get out of this room is if somebody comes to visit us. Who could visit me? All of my friends don't have visas. If they got here, they would be arrested too. Hmm. So strange, after I'd been here just a short time, somebody did come to visit me. Well, I didn't know what to do, but it was so good to get out and to see the sunshine for the first time. I looked and it was a couple of Americans. What were they doing here? It looks like they're speaking Thai. They don't know my language. I don't know their language and I haven't really learned much Thai. So we just kind of waved at each other. Hi. We shouted across a fence to one another. But it was really good to see them. And you know what they did? They prayed for us. Well, we're Muslims, and we pray five times a day. But their prayers were a little bit strange. Somehow I felt God was listening. When they left, they gave us a bag of groceries. Had peanut butter, bread, some fruit. Much better than the cucumber soup and rice that we get daily here. The Christians kept coming back to our room every week. They'd bring us some food, and we didn't have anywhere else to go, and they'd sit and eat with us and then they would one of them would tell a story to us there was one story it's about a man that built this really big boat and he got all the animals in the world on the boat or two of every animal and then God sent this huge flood and destroyed he killed everything in the world and then he said God remembered this man and sent a wind and dried up the the ground and the man and his family were safe. It was a cool story. And then he looked at me and he said, Zafar, 
you think that God has forgotten you too. So far, God remembers you. He is going to take care of you and he's going to bring your family back to you. I couldn't help it. I just started crying. 27 years old and I've never really cried in my life, but those were the first words of hope anybody had ever said to me. The Christian somehow found out that I was expecting another baby. So they started coming to see me every week, sometimes more than once a week. It was really great. And always they would pray. We knew God was listening to them. My Muslim friends and I couldn't talk about it because it's forbidden. But I saw them asking too, pray for me, pray for me. My language was getting a little better and I could complain a bit but mostly they would keep me laughing. The children told me there was a Christian coming to their school also, teaching them some science experiments. These people were really trying to help us, but sometimes they were a little bit honest, more than I could take. One of the men came to me and said, Hey, I need to tell you that my wife is teaching your children every Wednesday, and your children are fighting with all the other kids in the room, and they're not behaving. If they keep this up, the teacher might not bring them out to school every day. Well, I was so shocked, and here I was without my husband. Usually he does the discipline in the family. But I appreciated it. They were trying to help me. And he said, never mind, we all have children too. We understand. The months went by, and the Christian kept coming back to our room. And pretty soon we had a big crowd of men just there to listen to the stories. And they would ask questions. And I was embarrassed because sometimes the questions would be mean and rude. They were trying to trick him. He'd, he'd answer everything and the things he didn't know. He says, it's all right. I'll find out and I'll come back. That's such a good question. We finally said, do you know if we go to the mosque and ask these questions, they'll beat us? He said, that's crazy. God loves questions. It's, he gave you a brain to sign your thinking. Finally, one day I spoke up for the men. You know, we've been here for months, and we can't work. We don't have any money. We don't even have money for food. We don't have money we, for rent. The landlord is threatening to throw us out. Will you pray that God sends us work, even though it's illegal to work here? I said, I think that's a reasonable request. And so got on his knees, and he prayed, God, send this man up our work I got work I got work every single day I had work construction in fact it got to the point I had so much work I was able to hire 21 of my friends to work with me expecting a baby is never very easy but imagine having a baby in a room with 140 other people. Well, uh, these were some grumpy days. In Thailand, the weather is most always 100 degrees. It was hot. There was just a fan going. I tell you, the only relief we got is when they put a DVD in the middle of the floor and let us watch some videos. You need something to forget about your problems. They called me when Samina was having the baby. They said, Safar, you can come to the hospital and see your wife. I hadn't seen her in seven months. And we will not arrest you. So excited. They wouldn't let me in the delivery room. But Sam and I were there outside sitting. Behind us were the guards from the, the detention center. We were waiting. And pretty soon the Christian man comes. And he starts talking to the guards in Thai. And then he runs off and buys a big bunch of food and drink for me. Gives them to the guards. And they go off. So it's just us three sitting. Now, my English is not very good, and he's an old man. His, his Urdu was terrible, but after a while, he reaches in his pocket and pulls out his cell phone, and he shows us something. He says, I want you to see this. It was a movie in Urdu about a, a man named Isu, uh, Jesus. Sam and I were just looking. 
you know when the lady in the video gave birth to Jesus, the nurse comes out and said, you've got a baby boy. And Sam just went, so maybe we had heard about Jesus, but we didn't know he was like this. He was so kind. He was such a, he was such a good man. Why are they doing that to him? Why did they treat him like that? We saw the whole movie and looked at the Christian. And just, as soon as the movie was finished, Samina comes out on her bed, going up to the room with the baby. She's chained to the bed. I had my baby chained to the hospital bed, like I was going to run, run away. My other two children were in the detention center. What kind of crazy person would run away? It was the best two days of my life. When they let me in, I got to see my wife and hold my baby boy, Salmit. It was wonderful. And then after two days, they took her back to the detention center. Months went by. Months. 16 months. It had been almost a year and a half since I'd seen my four-year-old and my six-year-old. And then they told me, Zafar, we'll let you bail your family out. You can bail them out and they can come stay with you. And it only costs you $1,700 a person. $1,700. When I have work, I make $8 a day. Where was I going to get, what, $1,700 for four people? Y'all don't even know. Do y'all go to school? What was I going to do? But I went in my cupboard where I hid every penny I made, and I went to the Christian, and he counted right in front of me. I had exactly enough money to get my family out. We were back together again. Here she is. It was so great to be out of the detention center. We were a family again. Even though our room is only about the size of your bathroom, it was so nice just to allow the children to see their father and for us to be together again. You know, Zafar told me about the movie he had seen at the hospital, and I had seen that same movie in the detention center. It was exciting, and I even found myself getting really excited when I knew the Christians were coming to see us because something about these stories just grabbed our hearts. In fact, when I knew he was coming, I decided to videotape the story so I could send it to my sister in Pakistan. After a few months, something happened. The baby got a high fever, and it wouldn't go away. We eventually had to take him to the hospital. Now, there are lots of good hospitals in Bangkok, but we really couldn't afford one, so we took him to the hospital down the street. Yeah, I hadn't had work for several months now. And it was really terrible. The doctors weren't very hopeful. They said it's meningitis. Oh, my goodness. The Christians came, and they cried with us. We were so fearful. One day, the doctor said, you know, we're going to have to do a surgery, and it'll cost about $10,000. Oh my goodness, where would we get that kind of money? They wanted to do something to his brain. He had water on the brain. And the missionary said to us, you know, I've got to be honest. God can do anything. You know, we don't know what he might do. He could provide the money because we surely don't have it. Or he could heal your son. But we're going to pray. And you know, even we Muslims believe that Jesus has healing power. So I prayed too. Jesus, please heal our son. We all prayed. And they told us there are people all over the world praying for your son right now. Well, not long afterwards, there was a brain scan, and the doctor said, Your son is healed. I don't know what's happened. We knew what happened. It's the God of the Christians. It's a God that we believe in. He healed our son. Samina's pregnant again, number four. I'm so excited. She's not. That's the family we wanted to share with you today. They're one of several families that we've had a chance to come to know the past few years. Uh, 
We're so grateful for the opportunity that you guys have given us to be there with uh, the International Mission Board and your support through prayer and the corporate program and Lottie Moon. Um, over the past, I'd say, 10 years, refugees have been coming in by the thousands, just, just like Safar and Samina. And it's been such a great opportunity to see how God will work in places that we're totally helpless. Now, we've been with the International Mission Board almost 28 years now, and 25 of them have been in Bangkok, and we speak Thai. We had just been expecting to continue to work with Thai people because that's what we had been doing for a long time. But, you know, Jeremiah 33, 3 says, Call unto me, and I will answer and show you great and mighty things that you know not. We had no idea we would be working with refuge, refugees, and it's been such a surprise to us even. I was working at an international Christian school, but most of my students were Buddhists, and so it was a wonderful opportunity because I could speak Thai and work with the families, and that was a great ministry where we were able to bring many people to Christ. But as I was working there, we started noticing about a thousand students that are in hideout all over Bangkok and unable to go to any kind of school. And the Lord started dealing with me. I felt a little bit like Moses hanging on to a staff saying, I really like this school and this ministry. But the Lord said to me, you know, this school can find other teachers to work here with the same heart that you have. But I need you to do something a little different. And so I was willing to lay that down, and God was really great in allowing us to open up a home school for about 20 of these students. We couldn't take all 1,000. And to help them to be able to have a hope, some education, while they're waiting to go to another country. And many of the volunteers from Mississippi have been involved in that as well. So that's been such a joy. Our students have been able to get some international scholarships, which has been such a blessing for them also. Yeah, these refugee families, you think of refugees and you automatically think of poor, destitute people without jobs. These are people like accountants and teachers and nurses, doctors, um, people like Zafar, plumbers. They're normal people that are getting killed before what they believe. Genesis 8-1 says, but God remembered Noah. And he sent a great wind that covered the earth and the waters receded. You know, sometimes you think, ah, it's so scary to, to share Christ. You know, we've been in a situation where we're just part of the wind that God sends out. Winds don't do anything. They just blow where God sends. You guys are part of the wind too. Just the spirit of Christ working in you, we are all working together, and God is causing the waters to recede. Thank you so much for your part in that. Amen. I'm going to ask them, I don't know if you're willing to do this or not, but um, before we have our invitation, uh, I'm going to ask you both, if you will, just pray in Thai. Could you do that? And I want you to interpret so that we'll know what you're saying. As they would probably do on the probably the, as when you have interpreter come over or something. Yeah, that, do that. that way just pray for the interpretation and also for Christmas Thanks, Jim. Great Father. Kapakum Pajal Samrap Ogat Ni Puja Ma Ruamgap Ogni. Thank you for this opportunity to be in this church. Kapakum Pajal Samrap Jai Samrap Samachit Tukon I Ogni Puja Pagat Kwamrak Kompajal Tualog. Thank you for the hearts of all the members here who have the desire to share your love throughout the whole world. May you send your mercy and grace on each of these members. May we understand the new vision you have for all of us to share the gospel throughout the whole world. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The cross upon which Jesus died.